So your view on climate is somewhat different than what we hear in the mainstream. Can you explain a bit more about that? So when we talk about putting CO2 in the air and we've got to stop that, we've got to think about what's controlling the actual concentrations of CO2 in the air. And it's not just what we're putting in there. That's going into a much larger system with these very rapid exchanges. And what's controlling those exchanges is the sun, temperature, and water. There's a very interesting paper by a fellow Solanke in Nature uh, about five years ago, who showed that the 20th century was one of the uh, periods of the most rapid increases in solar activity of the last 10,000 years, 11,000 years. So what we've actually seen over the last 100 years is a very significant increase in solar activity. And uh, there's a lot of very strong evidence that shows that solar activity not only increases direct uh, shortwave radiation which warms the planet, but that's a very minor component. It also changes its, the, what we call the heliomagnetosphere, or, which is the protecting uh, shield against cosmic radiation. So if you have, and, and cosmic radiation is an ionizing radiation and contributes to cloudiness. Mm -hmm. So if we have a stronger sun, we have decreased cloudiness. And these are demonstrated correlations. Very good uh, research, in fact, with uh, particle accelerators to show that we can produce those same uh, ionizing radiation and, and uh, cloud forming nuclei, mm -hmm. which changes cloudiness. So there's a very strong correlation between solar activity, cloudiness, and global temperature. And anybody can relate to the difference in global temperature or, or environmental temperature on a cloudy day or a sunny day. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. We have very strong correlations between uh, solar activity and cloudiness. For Friends of Science, I'm Michelle Sterling.